Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I've been buying a lot of games in preparation for some upcoming Ryzen APU videos and one of the most requested titles literally ever in the comments has been Fortnite. Having never played it before I was stunned to learn of the huge player base. I was also pretty certain that because of the basic graphics it would run smoothly on even integrated solutions, especially considering the minimum specs included 2.4GHz i3, HD4000 graphics and 4GB of RAM. So so then, can this Unreal Engine based title run on the minimum stated developer specs and if so how well? Let's find out. HD4000 graphics started appearing with Intel's 3rd gen socket 1155 i3 desktop processors, the cheapest of which was the 3225. At 3.3GHz this exceeds the 2.4GHz minimum requirement, which is likely associated with the mobile i3-3110M. Now initially I decided to start from the lowest possible settings, and had planned to work my way up at first lowering things to the minimum detail preset. I did keep 3D graphics at 480p though, to try and maintain some clarity. Jumping into a game and to be honest I was immediately hooked. It's definitely a lot of fun but I was a little concerned that I was probably not going to be turning up any settings today. As you can see performance isn't fantastic so I jumped back into the menu and reduced 3D graphics all the way which did give us a little more performance and although we exceeded 30 FPS on occasion the average did come back lower than that. So let's take a look at the average frame rates as well as the 1% and 0.1% lows which will give you a better indication as to whether or not any stutter occurred besides the already low frame rates. If you look at the percentile figures you'll see that the numbers indicate some stutter here and to be honest there were a few noticeable frame drops. For some reason though 20 FPS for example in this game doesn't feel as bad as 20 FPS in other games. Perhaps it's because it's third person or maybe it's because I've been playing a lot of San Andreas on the PS2 recently. Either way these numbers aren't exactly playable but they don't honestly feel massively terrible. Now for a quick look at the recommended specs which include a 660, 7870 and at least a 2.8GHz i5. For this test I used an old but very common i5-2400 as well as a 660 and 8GB of RAM. I chose the 2400 because it's often found in old pre-built Dell PCs on eBay and the developers didn't specify which i5. I did things slightly differently here because after watching Nerd on a Budget's recent i5-2400 and 660 combo video, I noticed how well Fortnite ran on this pairing, so instead of testing all the settings, I wanted to target 60 FPS and see how high we could turn things up on both 720p and 1080p and still maintain that target. At 720p high settings were probably the best bet. Epic would cause a few more frame drops, but at high we saw a 70 FPS plus average during the gameplay period. There were a few spells of stutter though which was no real distraction, just worth pointing out. At 1080p medium was the ideal setting for me with 67 FPS on average. This will drop in busier and town areas, but with so much open space in the game our older hardware has room to breathe. Again, there will be some stutter though and the percentile figures were similar to that of the 720p results. All in all, the minimum specs looked like they were literally intended to just run the game to get it started and the recommended specs are pretty much spot on for 60fps. If you have a quad core i5, 660 or 7870 you'll have a good time with the game in its current state but remember since the upload of this video performance may have changed and at this point the game is still in early access. Guys thank you for watching I hope you've enjoyed this uh, performance analysis of Fortnite it's been out a while now but it has recently had another couple of performance updates and I'm still waiting on a few more things to download before I put my Ryzen APU videos out there but as always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like on it. Leave a dislike on it if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And, as always, hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.